What's up, my people? Welcome to Fellowship Bible Church's Sermon Spotlight, where we are coming at you each and every week with a fresh weekend to debrief in an effort to send biblical truth. And what better way to do that than by the power of virtual conversation? I'm Caleb Pearson. Joining me once again in the Zoom chat, Mark Francis. Mark, how you doing, man? Hey, what is up? I'm good doing great. You. Good to see awesome. you. Uh, Southern Steps, am I right there? With yes, the sir. You, that is, you got to have the virtual background, of course. Yeah, and uh, awesome. it has special meaning. We might be able to get to that story later today, but we shall uh, see. But yeah. That's awesome. A, yeah, my favorite, uh, my favorite memory from our trip. But sweet. Well, good. Yeah. Uh, joining us again, Miss Alicia Battaglia. Alicia, how are you? I'm doing great. Very good. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then my guy, Senior Mark Carey, uh, according to your virtual background, clue us in. Is this a random? This is uh, this is the Oregon coast. Uh, oh, really? We were out there a few years ago. I did uh, my nephew's wedding out uh, in Oregon, oh, wow. and uh, we took a little extra time and. Uh, Went down the Oregon coast. That's really cool. Did you take that picture? I took that picture. No way. That That's is right. awesome. I took that, that picture. So and uh, let's see here. Oh, here's another one I like. I like this one for two. What a, what a Zoom master with ease. He's <laughs> just there. his background. <laughs> Look at there. For all those people that just listen to this, they love these intros about the virtual background, that's right? That's, yeah, that's true. Forgot about our audio <laughs> listeners. <laughs> I miss my podcast. Mark, I miss my podcast booth, man. I'm, I'm yeah. telling you. We had Zoom community group, and I love it. I love those people. But at a certain point, I'm like, oh, Zoom. Is that a dandy? Well, you could be in Las Vegas. <laughs> 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 oh gosh there could be like a i don't know like a time lapse of our using of zoom as far as the church is standing. like everybody's like new and professionally looking in them and then you get to this point where i'm not shaving mark is changing his virtual background every eight seconds it's just where we're at and i'm still boring with <laughs> no, nothing no, a no. wall <laughs> that's but hey, i'm in the corner of my parents basement all right there's nowhere to go literally <laughs> wow that is nothing to admit right there. oh it's transparent it's transparent all right i am who i am i am who i am and i'm using their zoom account too and you're just, just be glad i remember to change my name from barry and suzanne to caleb but anyway good to see you guys once again um awesome to see the the kind of the easter recap video up alicia and i were honored to be a part of that little video it was cool to see the creative team uh, upload that and then uh, another sermon again as we finally in my opinion get to Romans 5 uh, I've been looking forward to it um, super good uh, Mark Francis I'll come your way first uh, response to the weekend where you at where's your heart so many things yeah. I mean so I'll just touch on a few things right off the bat but first of all you guys did a great job of just kind of being almost the host of yeah. the worship time hmm. setting it up and and concluding it pointing us in the right direction, reminding us why we gather to me that is so valuable, especially in these times and to, to set up the worship experience. And so for me being on stage also and singing, I've got to admit, I mean, I, I'm not singing on stage as often because we're only doing one venue. And so I miss it. I enjoy it. And having two or three weeks to almost mentally prepare what um, what I'm going to be singing and what words we're putting on people's mouths in their own homes to me was so valuable. I have those songs on a loop in my head and having words like, you know, we've been justified by faith, having words that I'm a child of God, having words of j that are just constantly ringing in my head that, that he's the only king forever. Those things are leading up to the worship time was meaningful to me. And then even after the worship time. So I just appreciate the entire 75 minute package that we get a chance to put on each and every week, um, you know, sermon included, but for me, it's, it's the entire thing. And so you guys are part of that. So I really appreciate that um, of being willing to jump in and, and share that kind of story um, to our body. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool to be a part of it. And when, when they reached out, I think to Alicia and I both were kind of like, you know, that makes sense. Like it's kind of like a, a greet, a greeting, you know, come through the door here. Here's where we're at with virtual church, I guess. So it was, it was fun. Absolutely. Alicia, what are, what are some of your thoughts? Oh, I, I agree. And I love the, the whole 75 minutes. I think the entire thing to end is the, the whole package of the worship service. Every element is important. 
and, yeah. and I appreciate even the you know the the elders and even the you know from the worship to the sermon to the beginning when it opened up and showed the pictures of the families yeah. over Easter that was so neat I just loved seeing so many people who submitted their pictures and you know, just the body of our church what they were doing was really neat so was that what they were doing, yeah. submitting? We were submitting pictures to the church? Yep. Okay. Yep. I thought they Over were just, the course of the week, yeah. We, I thought they we were did just snagging that, them. So. I thought yeah. they were just totally taking them off of Facebook and stuff because my <laughs> family did just like a bedhead and PJs, you know, Easter in a quarantine, haha. And once I saw it in the video, I was like, we should have dressed up. <laughs> wow. Well, you can blame your parents for that yeah. because oh, if you didn't I know about do. it, absolutely. I always they... do, bro. <laughs> yeah. Classic Barry and Suzanne, but... Mark, uh, Marky Mark, tell us a little bit about where we were this weekend, what we were studying, and, and I don't know if you brought any, uh, any thoughts. Um, got good feedback, by the way, on, on last week's uh, diving into your lecture style, sermon Zoom light, sharing your screen and going through the different elements of faith. It was really, really cool. Got some good hmm. feedback on that. So yeah, where were we this weekend? Well, uh, transitioning uh, to, a, to another major, really major section of the book of uh, Romans. Hmm. Um, those first four chapters lay a foundation, justification, truth. Um, but there is chapter five, verse one begins with therefore. And so we're, we're transitioning now into this, uh, what's called a sanctification truth, uh, the, the, the lived out Christian life truth of uh, Romans five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, chapter five is, is kind of a, a, a transitional chapter. And um, so Paul's argument is progressing, um, and it was clearly shown in that first verse, therefore having been justified uh, by faith, you know, based on everything I've written, Paul says in the first four chapters, um, what are the implications? What are the, wh what's the impact of this? What are the, what's the value of it? What are the blessings of it? And he begins to give an inventory list mm. of, uh, of the blessings. And it's going to grow and build towards, we, we, we get into um, chapter 6, 7, and 8. Uh, I, think, I think people ultimately want to ask, or, or people maybe ultimately want to know kind of the so what. Okay, so I have a right standing with God. How does it impact? How, how, does this thing called the Christian life really work? Does it work? I mean, what's different? I mean, we go through this crazy time of isolation, and you know, we're we're on top of each other at home, and maybe there's conflict, or there's uh, you know, are we just getting stir crazy? And and uh, so, okay, so I'm justified by faith. Well, what's the impact of that? And ultimately, right. where Paul's going is to tell us um, that real life, the the life that God has intended for us to live, is can be experienced on a moment-by-moment -moment basis, a life of victory over sin. Um, and, and, and he's going to walk us through in these next few chapters of, uh, of what that means and the implications of that. It starts with, we have peace with God. Right. And I don't think, you know, if, if you don't know what you're missing sometimes, you don't maybe appreciate it. And if you think what life apart from God Life being under the wrath of God, maybe, I don't you know, we probably don't think about that on a regular basis. But it's a big thing for Paul, the apostle, when he said, having been justified, we have peace with God. And um, that little phrase alone, we, we could unpack for hmm. hours, probably. Yep. Um, that's that's that definitely one of my top things that I, I, I gravitate towards, that passage of having peace with God. Because... We did spend so long in chapters one, two, and three, where we got a chance to really sit and wrestle in our sin and the wrath of God. And we were, remember we were talking about how, man, when are we going to move on? We'll get there. We'll but get it's there. still so yeah. valuable to get to this passage and to only, and to have you only just cover these two verses, Mark, is great. Because if we just glaze over this, um, we lose these deep um blessings essentially that are even in these first couple of verses and and i love the fact that it is truly the first one that comes up we have peace with god and, and how you unpacked it to explain 
it's not just this emotional or this kind of like uh, feeling of peace. It's 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 the the peace that God has given us through Christ to that is like brought us away from the enmity that we've had with him to then now being in a right relationship with him. And that word reconciliation is later on in the passage, I know, but that having that first word of peace to me is key. That's awesome. And to speak to that in, in two ways, one, just, I love Romans five, three through five. And the fact that we didn't get there was humbling for me to, to go ahead and take it slowly and be like, ah, yes, the first two verses are important too, <laughs> to help understand it. But the way three and four specifically read and, and what all that, the, the trial and suffering is for, it's, it's, it reads so powerfully. I feel like that's the, the climax of the movie or the, the meat part of the speech of what this is all for. But I think it's huge. And, and Mark, you mentioned this in your sermon of, you know, we're pivoting. You mentioned the justification, the sanctification, the glorification. And so we're, we're on the sanctification mindset now. Um, and I had community group last night. And Mark and Alicia, I, know, I don't know if you guys are still doing community group early in the week as well. But one thing we, we talked about was it seems like there are a lot of churches, a lot of pastors, a lot of theologians, whatever, that don't pivot from justification to sanctification when they read through these later chapters in Romans. Is that fair to say, Pastor Mark? Like, is there a potential pitfall there in misinterpreting these scriptures if we don't think of them as for sanctification? Well, yeah. Whenever we we miss the intent of the author, what 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 was the author's intent? If we miss what the author is trying to communicate and his intent, mm -hmm. well, it 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 really. Um, it loses its value. I mean, so yeah. we're always striving to say, what? How do you interpret this? What? What is the author? The the author's intent as he's writing this, and that when you make this pivot, um, um, we we cannot minimize the foundational truth of justification. But it's almost like that is. He he had to explain that so he can get to sure. Th these other important uh, uh, truths about basically how the Christian life works and, 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 and how it should be lived and how it can be lived in victory and in power. Mm -hmm. um, um, no, no, Christian, it, 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 no Christian is going to live in a way that's inconsistent with how they perceive themselves. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as a defeated Christian. The, the cross has brought victory. But there sure, uh, unfortunately, are a lot of ignorant Christians where we're not living in light of the reality. So, so, so oftentimes we, can, we can't get beyond the eternal salvation, the, the justification truth. Um, I'm going to heaven and God, Jesus died for me. Hallelujah. Hmm. Well, okay, that's just the beginning. Right. Therefore, having been that, and uh, the Apostle Paul I marvelously unpacks and, and, and opens up this incredible inventory of blessings and our, the, the richness of what that justification truth has actually accomplished for us and who we really are. And we're, we're never going to experience the fullness of the life that we've been designed to experience if we don't get and understand what we're about to go into in these following chapters. Mm -hmm. the, that word therefore is extremely important because it's, you know, you're taking the first four chapters and what Paul has to say, which are foundational for our understanding for what, you know, we had to know what the bad news was before we can hear the good news and really rejoice in and be thankful for what God has us. We had to understand what our position was. And the good news is what Jesus has done for us. And he's given us this rescue plan and this gift of righteousness. But we're not going to be able to appreciate that until we did, you know, understand what the bad news was and that you know, the world was populated with sinner, sinners. God's ass abides. It's uh, so... Yeah, so it's important. The word therefore is pretty foundational, I think, in those, for those two verses. 
Well, and justification is it, there's such a beautiful spiritual connotation to it, of course, because we're you know we're new, we are renewed, and, and we're spiritually transformed. But the practicality of the sanctification is so huge, and just like Mark said about there's no such thing as a defeated Christian. There are only ignorant ones who don't know who they fully are in Christ. Um, I'm doing a, a Bible study devotional thing in the morning, 30 names in 30 days. Tony Evans is going through 30 different names of God. And this morning's the one I did for Corona Clarity with the youth group was El Ra. Uh, and it, mean God, it means God sees me. Uh, God is fully aware of who I am now and what I'm going through now. And, and, and that, in my mind, just spoke to the sanctification walk. And it's not this mystical enigma of, I know I'll be in heaven one day. Let me make sure I get there accordingly. No, God is aware of where I am, and he's meeting me where I'm at. And then, Mark, like you said in your sermon, I just thought it was great, an inventory of blessings that is, in fact, sweeter than inheriting 400 acres and a castle. You know, it's just, it, it, it's very good to, to be aware of it. And then, like you said, don't be ignorant of that. Yeah, and just going through the list. Go ahead. Go ahead, Alicia. Yeah, I was saying going through the list of all the different things that there are of it is it's it unpacks so much, and and just yeah. in that small little passage of peace and introduction, standing in grace and through mm -hmm. faith, and then rejoicing and exalting in the hope of the glory of God, uh, to to me, just that one phrase of of rejoicing in the hope of glory of God also has so much meaning too, but, um, and by the way, it was I, nice to sing that. Uh, so thanks to the worship team to, to emphasize that we, we you know, we actually sang yeah. Roman five too. Exactly. And, and on, on a loop. So again, in my head, I mean, I've, <laughs> I've got that, I've got that in my head all the time, just that phrase and, and it's simple and easy to sing. And then having the meaning behind what that phrase really means, um, is helpful so that way you're singing something and you understand what you're what you're singing. Alicia, you were going to say something. Yep, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so that when Caleb was talking, I had made a note um, from Psalm 1611, which says, "You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forevermore." And I think that that very well complements what you were saying and that God is, he is with us right now in the moment. And he has made known this path. He's provided this path for us to be on. And in his presence, we have joy. And through this, we're, he's with us. So um, in his pleasures forevermore, which, you know, that ties into the end of your sermon, Mark. Um, with the glorious hope that we have. Mm, it's really good. Well, and I love the, just the, the verse two, and I, I think, Mark, you broke it down and said, okay, well, we have gained access into this grace, and then we also now stand in it, Romans 5, 2, and breaking those up into two different, you know, an, an inventory of blessing. We've been given access that is a blessing, and it's something in which we now stand. Um, and for me to break down the scripture like that is huge. I, I, part of me feels like when I'm listening to these sermons, I'm looking for things and appreciating things that maybe other people aren't. And the reason I say that is because I've been like writing sermons on my iPhone since I was like 12. And I've loved to shadow these guys and see how it works. And, and a few months back before the world went to chaos, you know, Don was taking me and a few people through a, a preaching class, learning how to you know, do all this stuff. And like, man, the, the, the passage he assigned me, I'm like, how am I supposed to make 45 minutes out of two verses? And then to just watch, you know, Mark do that this past weekend and say, like, oh, well, that's basically how you do it. Um, and it breaks down the scripture and it brings it to life. So it's just so cool to, the words taste sweeter uh, if you take your time and dwell on them and meditate on that. So the point of the sermon was not to to meditate on God's word, but that was almost an application that hit me of just like, wow, like this is, this is it. This is the real stuff, especially my anticipation for Romans 5 for the last month and a half. It, it's really cool that, that it's here and the words, you know, mean what they mean. So I appreciated that. And analogies and applications of even like an introduction and how, you know, using a story of how you've been introduced to certain people throughout your mm -hmm. lifetime and how it's impacted even people here at FBC um, it, is meaningful. And, and then another application of of you getting a chance to sing, Mark. I mean, you get a chance to to have something that hit you the night before of an application to the, to the hope of the glory of God. 
and and pointing us in that direction you know i i still i'm like what what led you to that moment that night to make you think okay we're gonna sing the song when we all get to heaven and how did that come into play well uh, going back to something caleb was saying too is um you you can approach the scripture as a textbook and you know it happens um i can remember even in seminary days um one professor i remember him sharing how he was uh translating through the book of psalms uh during during a summer and he was spending time in the psalms but it, it ended up being more of a of an intellectual exercise and he said halfway through the summer his spiritual life hit bottom rock bottom i mean here he is translating and, and studying the book of psalms mm. one of the most visceral emotional books of the bible and he was in the in the tank spiritually because it, he wasn't going to it and seeing it as it was these are the very words of god oh you know taste and see that the lord is good and so as you study um the scriptures um that's that's my hope and desire is that it, it feeds my soul you can't impart what you don't possess you know so and and um that hit me in a little special way we exalt in the hope of the glory of god we're going through some times right now in the nation and the world uh, you know and and you know I'm, I'm sure everybody's getting tired of seeing the death uh statistics even though they're not nearly as bad as what they everybody thought they were going to be but it's still there and um and you, i don't know i just get so tired of these politicians and these people um pontificating about the science behind it all and 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 uh, what we need to do and I, I mean i appreciate it i'm glad i'm glad there are great minds out there dealing with this stuff bottom line is as believers of jesus christ we have hope in the coming glory of God. And it's not about life in this world. And we need to rejoice in that. We need to exalt in that. We need right. to um, uh, get excited about it. And that that uh, old hymn, um, you know, when we all get to heaven, uh, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. Um, yep. We'll sing and shout the victory. Well, whoever wrote that old hymn, I mean that that was a an emotional mm. uh, it it was touching their their soul to to think about the coming glory of God. I think it was touching Paul's soul. And anyway, that came to my mind. And even though I may sound like a as they say a ball and cap and a hailstorm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you mentioned it <laughs> at the end. He's like, oh, even if we sing as lousy as we do, I'm like, oh, Mark, you're being hard on yourself. <laughs> Who who played piano for you? Because they were ready to go, man. Was that well, Faye uh, oh, okay. Berkmeyer? Um, yeah. Although I was ready to go up there and do it myself, but we didn't have a pianist. I was, because, uh, <laughs> yeah. and part of that also was I I want people to to see in your own personal walk with God, spontaneous praise to the Lord should be normal in what we do. I mean, yeah. I, I I'll be driving down the road and. I will break out in, uh, in 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 the most incredible, beautiful voice you could ever imagine. <laughs> um, but I think we need to see that model sometime. It's it, I mean, our worship services are planned, they're prepared, mm -hmm. they're practiced, and when we have to do it online, we, we have to you know we, we that. But there's something about spontaneous rejoicing to the Lord. And um, it hit me that night before with that hymn. And I thought, I'm going to just share that uh, as bad as it might be. But this is, this is what you it's do great. when you it's great. connect with Jesus. It blessed me. It blessed me. As soon as you started that, my face lit up. And I, I shared with our small group how it reminded me of uh, an elderly lady who we used to go to church with and she said she would always be on the front row and she would have her hands up and she would sing about heaven with all of her heart and i as a young as a young woman i you know i appreciated what she was welling up in her heart but i didn't quite fully understand it and as 
we grow older in life, we begin more and more and more because we are anticipating and um, just looking forward to these promises of what God has given us. And so what you were just describing in verse five, which I'm sure we'll get to next week, um, you, it's in hope put us to shame. We can scream and yell in our car and, uh, at, and sing songs of praise because God love, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. It's this upwelling of the Holy Spirit. Light, it's life. It's mm. life giving um, that really affects our daily, our daily living. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's responding to the word of God. It's responding to truth and knowing who he is. And, and that brings that spontaneous worship. And hopefully the, the worship services that we do each week, those corporate gatherings, if you want to call them, that, call them that, are a response to our life during the course of the week. And we get a chance to, to do that right now with our families. And when we gather back together, it'll be with other people. But, you know, it's not just about a singular moment in time. It's about that, like you said, Mark, day to day moment by moment, um, knowing who he is and responding to who he is on a regular basis. Yeah. Well, and Mark, one, one uh, to, to speak to that, Mark Francis, one thing that that reminded me of is actually the, your background there, the Southern Steps, because it, when we were in Israel together, that was a moment where we sat down and we all sang. Like, I don't know mm -hmm. if you remember the, I mean, you did it, so you remember, but uh, yeah. Other groups were watching us and being like, okay, oh no, we got another singing group. But man, it was so awesome. Like that, that was my favorite memory of the entire trip in Israel for 12 days. And yeah. I loved our tour guide to death, but that was my favorite part. It had nothing to do with what he planned for us. Because when we went and sat at the Southern Steps and sang that song, Oh Come Emmanuel, I'm like, this is the first time I haven't sung this around Christmas. And now it's my favorite song. Um, really yeah. cool and, and, and yeah. spontaneous in that way. So I don't know if it was equally as impactful to you. Well, it, it was for a little bit because again, as I'll, I'll give a little bit of background, but that's the background is here today because we were able to, to focus on the concept of God's peace. Mm. And, and so the Southern steps in Jerusalem is the entrance to the temple, um, that was built back then. And that was the common place where everybody would walk up and enter into the temple. And, and so I was asked to, to share a mini devotional when we got to those Southern steps. Um, and there's so many different things you can talk about because people now really relate to that as Jesus walked there, Jesus, we're, we're on these steps. And so if there's a devotional, people are going to talk about you're standing on Holy ground or you're standing where Jesus was. But what was kind of striking to me was even before the times of Jesus, people migrated there on a regular basis to go and, and worship God. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, they would be singing songs, and it's called in the Psalms, um, Songs of Ascent, where people would be singing songs in their journey to And one of the Psalms um, that I ended up looking at and we, we focused on was Psalm 122, which fully was focused on praying and, and asking for the peace of Jerusalem. And, and that word peace comes up in that psalm passage a couple different times. And the, the psalm writer was basically saying, may there be peace in Jerusalem. May there be peace within these walls. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And, and it instantly made me think of Romans 5.1, of, of looking at that psalm and what were people really looking at? And what was the psalmist, the writer of that Psalm 122, really, mm -hmm. that really saying when he's talking about peace for Jerusalem? So as this group, as our, our group and their tour guide was there, I was like, just overlook the town of Jerusalem. You know, I mean, yes, there's all kinds of social unrest. There's all kinds of political unrest. There's all kinds of just financial unrest. And they're looking for peace. They're looking for worldly peace. They're looking right. for, you know, temporary peace. And so how, how cool was it to then have this Christmas carol, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, where the final verse is, a, a call of pray to fill the whole world with heaven's peace rejoice rejoice um oh come to us emmanuel and so i actually ended up buying a bunch of these little things if you guys can see it it says pray for the peace of jerusalem mm -hmm. and and i gave them out to all the people when i got home from israel because that was the, a striking moment for me to think about how the whole town of jerusalem the nation of israel the whole world needs god's peace we don't need the 
the worldly peace. We don't need political peace. We don't need to feel comfortable with our daily lives. We need to be made right with God and we need that reconciliation. And so that was my big takeaway at the beginning of the year is when we went back in January. And, yeah, and yeah. so to still have that resonate in my heart today, singing songs about the peace of God. Um, and, and that was kind of a big takeaway where this moment where we're looking at this passage reminds me of that. So that's kind of my personal application and story for that. And, and by the way, going back to um, Don Den Hartog's sermon of Palm Sunday, where he talked about Abraham, um, who was, uh, you know, by faith, he lived uh, in, in not receiving the, uh, the promise, but it says in Hebrews 11.10, he was looking for the city whose foundation, um, uh, whose architect and builder is God. The city which has a foundation whose, whose architect and whose maker and builder is God. Abraham was looking for that, just yep. like the prophets of old. It's, mm -hmm. it's that coming time uh, when, when God will put everything right and there will be this worldwide millennial peace, shalom, that Isaiah the prophet talked about, um, that you were talking about, Mark, um, there on the, on the southern steps. And, and that we get to experience, personally, we have peace with God. We, in a personal way, right now, we have that, if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And one day, he is coming back. And, and, and we will see that city whose, whose builder and maker, it's the architect is God. And that's the very same thing Abraham was looking forward to yep. and the Old Testament prophets. Uh, but we can experience it right now through, through Christ. Um, we are experiencing it. We yeah, are. I mean, current reality. That's right. And, and that's, that's what we have, that wealth of riches and that first thing that Paul is describing, at least here in Romans, that first thing that we should be aware of is we have peace yeah. with God. And, and I don't want to, I want to mention one other thing here before we wrap this up or whenever, but um, all of this is possible. And there's a little phrase that's repeated. I, I may have mentioned it in the sermon, can't remember, but um, uh, verse one talks about it. Uh, we have peace with, uh, with God. And that says, through our Lord Jesus Christ, by means of, through him. And then verse two, through whom also we have this. Verse nine says, uh, we're saved from the wrath of God through him. And verse 10, we've been reconciled to God through the death of, of, uh, of his son. Verse 11, we exalt in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. And in chapter 5, he goes on several more times and talks about this mediatorial work of Jesus. I, it, it reminds me of what Jesus said in John 14, verse 6. Um, Let not your heart be troubled, and you'll believe in God. And he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father. No one has access. And, and life is in our, our relationship with our Father. That's where the ultimate blessings. It's not about, in one sense what we're experiencing, the wonderful things and all of, of, of being a Christian, that's great. The bottom line is, it's a relationship with the living God. And that is accessed through what Christ has done. Um, now, when you get in chapter six, he's going to talk a lot about being in Christ. And it will be a whole different little focus on our identity in him. But five, chapter five, it's this, he's saying all this is, is, is given to us through Jesus Christ. And we need to walk away again, I think. It should result in praise and worship. But do we really know what we have been blessed with because of Jesus? It's through him every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies has become ours. And um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, eternally grateful uh, to the Lord for yeah. what he's done for us. Yeah. From, the, from the therefore to the throughs. I like that a lot. That's awesome. Uh, Alicia, I'll come your way here real quick before Mark, you and I can wrap this up. Um, are you guys still doing, are you guys doing community group Zooms? Have you been able to have any conversations with, with people over the sermon? What is, what is that impact been like for you, Alicia? Yeah, we, so we meet on Monday night okay. and uh, we have great conversation. Um, and it's, 
yeah, it's neat to see everybody's faces each week and stay connected that way. Um, one, one thing that kind of, as far as this inventory of riches that yeah. we have, and in studying this, it brought me to Ephesians 1. Um, and I'm going to just read it because I think it puts a nice bow on everything that we've talked about. Um, starting in verse 16, Paul is saying, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And for me, I was in my prayers that God would give me eyes to see that um, I can have um, eyes to see him, to know him better, to experience and know his riches that he's given me now and that he, he, he is powerful. He is all powerful. And to be able, we have access to him. We can know his power. And um, so I just, you know, I, my prayer is that I would have eyes to see, to be able to give thanks in the, not only the big things, but in the little things each day, just mm. seeing how he's working in my life and um, being able to marvel at who he is and that that would increase my faith, that I would um, know him deeper and experience him deeper. And uh, so I, and I, I firmly believe that that affects um, all the little moments mm. in each and every day. Really good word, Alicia. That's great. Thanks. Yeah, pers personalizing the faith over, you know, ritualizing it or maybe just making it ha habitual. I mean, we've been talking a lot a little bit or recently about, you know, we don't have the habitual attendance of, of church anymore. So what is what does the body look like as we're doing things? Makes me want to break out into the old doxology. <laughs> whom all blessings I, I was like, I was like, if he, us sing, if he makes us sing, <laughs> I will boot him so fast. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, Mark, what's, what do we need to tell people about before we, before we get out of here? I don't really know of anything on the agenda other than the new status quo. As far as just kind of what's happening at FEC. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there are, um, there's actually been released for women of fellowship. Mm. Um, oh, that's right. Renew. A devotional. Um, series that the, the first devotional was released yesterday on Tuesday and um, this coming Friday in a couple days there's a anyone invited zoom participation interactive discussion time for all ladies um, so go to the website for details on that Friday afternoon at two o'clock you can log in um, and, and then obviously just keep worshiping together as families um, yeah. keep engaging with with each other and um, you know we're going to continue as a worship team to, to try to engage as many people as possible. Um, it's just, it's challenging, you know, just, but even having mm -hmm. pictures on a screen of people's Easter's is, is right. a start. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and just, you know, pray for one another, you know, and that's, yeah. uh, see how can we can, we can care. So that's, that's, that's our ministry, you know, to, mm -hmm. to love others and love God. That's awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, the fact of the matter everybody is that sermons are not meant to just take an hour but rather transform a lifetime until next week much love and god bless mm -hmm.